Hello, and welcome to Game Spasm, brought to you by Glink Media. Hey, Board Game Geeks, Brian Hazard here. Listen, it's time to talk a little bit more about Gloomhaven. It's really one of my favorite games right now. And there is an app that needs to be discussed. That is Gloomhaven Helper by Esoteric Games. This is a fantastic app that removes a substantial amount of record keeping and pieces from the table, makes it a lot easier to play the game. Now, let's take a look at it, and I'll tell you why I will never go back to playing the game without this app. Okay, let's get into the app itself here. I'll try not to get too granular. Uh, let me just show you at the beginning here what the settings that I use are so that you understand why things happen the way they do. I don't use hide stats as an option because uh, because page 12, because you don't have to hide stats from yourself. It's not that kind of game. Uh, and as far as character initiative goes, although there's a couple other options, I choose to use the number pad because I think it's the most streamlined and straightforward way to handle it. So when the app starts up, it asks you to add characters. You can simply hit on the level of the characters you want to add and then tap them in. If you want to add a higher level character, you just pick that level and then pick that character. You'll notice that it puts in the correct amount of hit points for that character based on their level. I'm not going to use the Spell Weaver, so I'll go ahead and remove her. So there you go. I've got my four characters, and you'll see that you can drag them up and down. This is the usual way for you to set initiative for characters, or at least the default way. Um, the only thing, one of the very few things I don't like about this app is that I am left-handed, and so I am constantly accidentally moving characters and enemies around in the initiative order. I would like an option to lock out that ability once you have chosen to use the number pad for initiative. Anyways, once your characters are on the board, you can see that you can change the hit points of your character just by dragging your finger left and right on the, on the HP tracker there. On the experience tracker over here, you can drag your finger left or right to add or uh, remove experience. When playing right out of the box, you keep these character cards around because they let you know how much HP you should have at the start of every scenario based on your character's level. And it also gives you a place to put the different statuses and conditions you get throughout the scenario and a place to put the money tokens that you collect. The app keeps track of all of this, so you don't need this card at all. Tapping on the character lets you get into a few more involved details, so you can track the hit points, experience, and the number of gold tokens you've collected. You can ex exhaust the character outright, which um, will gray them out on the screen but won't remove them from the scenario. You can also set any conditions that have been applied to the character in the scenario. And if you tap on this little crown down here, this is kind of cool, you can change the level of the character, change the hit points of the character. But a neat little feature that I just noticed uh, the other day is that you can also change the name of your character and make it a little more custom. So I like that. That's kind of cool. If you tap on this, it's going to allow you to add a summon. So in the regular game, whenever you summon a figure to or summon a token onto the board, you then take a smaller version of that token and put it on the ability card that brought the summons out. You don't have to do that anymore. You also don't have to use the damage tokens and sprinkle them on the, the uh, summon token or on the ability card because the app takes care of all that for you. So you just hit this plus Pick the color of the token and the number. Let's say this is a Wingnut's Harmless Contraption. So I believe that has six hit points. I think it moves three and it does no combat damage. So there's my summons. It is placed right above the character in initiative order. That way uh, you remember that the summons always go right before the, per the character who summoned them. You can tap on the summons and keep track of their health and all of their stat information. You can also just drag them left and right on the hit points in order to knock them out of the game if necessary. So that's pretty much the gist for the characters themselves. You'll see up here it then asks you to either add monsters or set a scenario. If you add monsters, you can add them manually, but the easiest way to add monsters is simply tell the app which scenario you're using. Now you'll notice up at the top it is circled a certain level, and that's because the app already knows the calculation for what level of scenario you should be playing based on the level of the characters that you put into the app. That's really cool. So it's telling me it should be a level one scenario, and there's also a solo box that you should check if you're playing solitaire if you want to follow the rules that say that when playing solo, monsters should be one level higher and traps should be uh, one level higher for the damage that they do. We're playing the first. This is uh, Black Barrow. Again, no spoilers in here. This is just stuff that would come straight out of the book. You would see it the moment you opened it and played your first game. So when we hit Black Barrow, you'll see that uh, there are now three monster types that are on the board. It shows you the stats that would usually be in the sleeve on the board. It has their decks for uh, what actions they're going to take each turn, and it gives you the name of the character. 
You'll also see it's added a combat modifier deck down here at the bottom for the monsters, and it's giving you all the information about the scenario. The name, the level, the damage that the traps do, how much bonus XP you get at the end if you finish, and how much gold each token is worth at the end of the game. In order to uh, keep track of the monsters, you're going to want to add them in. In the first scenario, the first room, we know we have all the bandit guards there. So we have four regulars, two elites. I just hit this button four times, and I get my uh, four regular guys. I hit this button twice, and I get my elites. I like to have it set to put them up front where they belong. And I also like it to randomly assign the standee numbers, uh, which makes it easier for me to not accidentally like look at them when I'm putting them on the board, which sometimes I have a, a hard time not accidentally uh, peeking because uh, there's mischief in my veins. So each monster can then be tapped on individually, which allows you to keep track of their, uh, their hit points. It also allows you to add blessings and cursings, blessings and cursings, alive, alive, oh, to the modifier deck. Uh, for the monsters, and you can keep track of all the different status conditions on the monsters as well, which is very nice. Just like everybody else, if you just grab a monster and drag left or right, you can change their hit points. If you drag them all the way down to zero, they disappear off of the board, which is very nice. Now, you'll notice that the elites have a shield, and when I drag their health, there's going to be a little shield icon that pops up to remind me that I should be mindful that they have a shield, which would reduce uh, the damage that's given to them. It doesn't actually change anything itself, but it lets me know. It reminds me. So here we go. I've got all of my guards on the board, and it's time for initiative. I prefer to be able to put it in manually, so I go in here, and I pick initiative for all of my guys. And then once I have all my monsters and my guys on the board, I hit draw, and what it's gonna do is automatically organize everything in initiative order, which I really like. So now everybody is in initiative order. As each character or enemy takes their turn, you can tap on it like this to gray them out to indicate that they've taken their turn. If you tap on somebody all the way down the line, it'll assume you meant to tap everyone and it will gray them all out. That's kind of handy if you want to uh, use that feature. I use that feature because there's also an option to automatically expire conditions. I like that because that means if my scoundrel got uh, pinned this, this round or um, immobilized, I believe they refer to it as, you'll watch when I hit into the, after the next round, it will take that off for me as long as I'm keeping track of who's taken their turns. Probably my favorite aspect of Gloomhaven Helper is how much it drastically simplifies the keeping track of enemy information. If you're playing out of the box, every round you're pulling a card for each type of enemy showing you an initiative, and it also provides different modifiers to their base stats, which you then have to reference in order to know what their abilities are for that turn. The app takes care of that. You don't have to worry about that deck. You'll notice something different and superior to the regular game is that instead of having modifiers on this card, that modify these numbers, it shows the final value for those monsters. You could turn that off. If you turn off Calculate Stats, it'll be uh, the same as it is in the base game where it gives you modifiers that you have to compare the two. But why bother? This uh, simplifies that by fixing it and doing that. It's very nice. Once they have all taken their turn... Oh, what am I talking about? To take their turns, they have to use their combat modifier deck. So when the monsters go, you just tap on the combat modifier deck and it will show you their, uh, their pull. If they have advantage or disadvantage, if they're muddled or strengthened, then it'll always show the last two cards, which then allows you to take care of uh, that action. Now, once you draw a card that has the shuffle on it, this is a common misconception because people will then tap the deck again and say it didn't shuffle, something's wrong. You don't shuffle combat modifier decks until the end of a round. That's true of enemies, that's true of players, so don't forget that. The app is not making a mistake. You'll notice when we finish the round, it will shuffle the deck. So each time a monster goes, you'll use the same deck in order to get uh, the combat modifier. Then once everybody has taken their turn and everybody's grayed out, you can hit next round. When you do that, you'll see that the combat modifier deck has shuffled itself and everybody is ready for the next round. If I were to, let's just really quick give everybody some initiatives and hit draw so you can see what happens with this uh, pin icon, you'll see that at the end of this round, when I hit next round, um, oops, we'll give, have, see, I just did it. I just moved them by accident. 
So let's say everybody took their turn. Let's take a look at the scoundrel. See, as soon as he took his turn, that uh, that immobilized icon went away. So I do like that. I like that it will track that for you. In a standard game of Gloomhaven, you would use the element infusion board to track which elements are strong, waning, or inert throughout the game by moving these sliders. And each round that uh, one of these isn't used, it moves down one. Up here is where you'll see the icons for the, uh, the uh, element infusion board. Now this is really nice. You can just tap on them to activate the different elements. They have awesome little illustrations that happen, little, uh, little animations, and you can also just turn them off when they get used. Now you'll notice if they're on and I um, finish a round, let's say everybody has finished their turn and I hit next round, you will see that they automatically go down to halfway. That means they're waning, which is you know halfway on the board, which is really cool. If you, for some reason, realize, oh crap, I should have turned it on, uh, instead of hitting it once to uh, put it at, at uh, strong, you can double tap it and that'll automatically set it to waning. And then of course you can just tap them to turn them all off. The app will also keep track of whether or not uh, somebody is a special monster like a boss and will put a little star on there. You probably don't have to worry about setting that yourself because the app is really good at knowing uh, when you're supposed to be, uh, when that's necessary based on the scenario that you're playing. And speaking of keeping track of enemies, there's one thing that the base game doesn't give you any way to track at all, and that is whether or not a monster should leave gold behind when they die. A regular enemy, when they die, drops a gold token that you're allowed to loot. However, summoned monsters are not supposed to leave gold tokens behind, and the game doesn't really give you a way to track that. Gloomhaven Helper does. So in order to show that a monster was summoned and shouldn't drop gold, when that monster comes out, let's say it's a living bones in this case, we hit this button to show that a living bones has come up, and you'll notice, I just moved it by accident again, you'll notice that it automatically pulled the initiative for that monster and put him in the correct order. But we can tap on that monster and we can touch this little icon down here. And this lets us know that this is a summoned monster and that it's not gonna drop a gold token when it dies. You'll also notice that there's a little X kind of going through the summon. That's because monsters that are summoned don't get to take a turn the round that they're summoned. When we hit next round, you'll note that that little X is gone and that means that it can now take its turn. This is a handy uh, way to address a very slight oversight in the original game. So that's that's the main features of the app that, uh, that really shorten uh, Gloomhaven. This is great for solitaire. I use it all the time, uh, constantly now, and, I, and I, I really like how much it simplifies so many aspects of the game. If you tend to play Gloomhaven with friends, two or more players, then you're going to love Gloomhaven Helper's networking ability, which allows you to link multiple phones or devices together and share all the information that's on the screen. Now, I'm a solitaire Gloomhaven player. I play alone exclusively. Hello darkness, my old friend. But I have to admit that this is probably one of the coolest features in the app. The networking ability that's built into Gloomhaven is uh, really neat, and maybe I'm just easily amused, but I just I think it's fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and start another phone so that you can see what this looks like. Okay, here we go. So, yikes. All right, I've got it running on two different phones now, and what it really usually runs uh, very easy to do. You simply go into settings on one phone, set it as a server, and then go into the settings on another phone and uh, set it as a client. And within a few seconds, we should see them connect. Let's see. Kind of making me look bad. There it is. There we go. So uh, you'll now see that I have this uh, the same game running on two different phones. By the way, I, I, I prefer to use the app on a phone versus a tablet uh, just because it takes up less space on the table, which is the whole point of the app. You can zoom in like I just did on the app so that you can see it a little better when you're using it on a phone. 
So now I have the same game running on both devices. So any change that I make on one will show up on the other, which means you can have four players playing the same game and all of the information is gonna be uh, synchronized between the two. It works fantastic. I hit the, oh, I have to add my initiative. Now here's, here's what's cool and why I like using the numbers versus the dragging, when, especially if you're gonna do this multiplayer on a network, is if uh, this player's playing Cragheart and the Scoundrel, uh, I'm going to put in their initiative, and you'll see on the other device, they come up as question marks, which is awesome because you're not supposed to know each other's initiative. So each character, each player can put in the initiative for their own character, and it will not show up on the uh, apps of the other people until uh, it comes time to hit uh, the old draw button. So we'll hit the draw button. And now it'll rank everybody, it'll show all the initiatives, and it'll rank them in the order that they are supposed to be played. Uh, and then when you're done, if you don't want to have it, you can just disconnect the, uh, the client and the server, and it'll still keep the same information. Great feature for multiplayer. So, there you have it. That is why Gloomhaven Helper is my app of choice, and I won't go back. If you are on iOS, unfortunately, you cannot get this app. The developer has made it clear that they make it far too difficult for him to be able to offer it on the, uh, on the App Store. So uh, if you want to use this, you can use it uh, through a web browser, though it doesn't have the networking ability then. You can use it on PC with a download, or you can use it on any Android device. It is a fantastic app. I will give you a link to the uh, Google Play Store and to Esoteric's website in the description below. Please, by all means, if uh, I've made any mistakes, let me know in the comments. If there's another Gloomhaven app that you would like me to talk about or, or, or discuss, please let me know about that too. And tell me what you think of Gloomhaven Helper, if you've had an opportunity to use it, and let other people know how much it's simplified your game. As usual, please subscribe, comment, get involved. I'd like to hear more from you guys about what you would like to hear from me. And I will see you guys on The Geek. Take it easy.